guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, today I'm going to be showing um, how to make the sun in Blender. Uh, I'm going to be using Blender 2.9. Um, yeah, let's get into it. So here's the scene just before uh, we start a new tab. Um, it's quite a simple scene. Uh, what we've got is we've got uh, two spheres, um, some strange Torus, uh, half torus shapes, and then a point light, um, and this all kind of feeds in to making the sun. And you can see in the world setting, uh, we've got a kind of like dark red, orangey world, um, and then some just a very small amount of volume uh, in the area to just give it a bit of a glow. So, so what we want to do is you want to start a new blender scene. Uh, we've got the camera, the point light, and the cube. Uh, we're going to do whatever. We uh, everyone does in this tutorial, I'm just going to delete all of that. Okay, so the first thing we want to add is a sphere. Um, just a normal UV sphere. Uh, we can sort of turn this down because we can add subdivision to it later if we need to, uh, just to make the process a little bit easier. Um, so we're going to use 16 segments, 8 rings, just to give it a bit of a, a blocky kind of look. Uh, and then if we right click, shade smooth, um, and there's our sun, and we're done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so you want to make sure it's shaded smooth. Uh, and then we are going to add uh, the subdivision modifier. Uh, what you want to do is you want to press Control and 1, and you'll see that adds a subdivision modifier with uh, one level of subdivision in the viewport, uh, two in the render. Um, you can you can also press Control 2, and that gets you two subdivision levels. Uh, and you can press Control 3, that gets you three subdivision levels, uh, etc. But uh, one should be enough um, for the minute. Again, we can bump that up later if we need to. Um, and then after the subdivision modifier, we want to add a displacement modifier. And what this is going to do is it's just going to break up the surface a little bit and give it a bit of a, a bumpy kind of shape. Uh, when we add the displacement modifier, we want to add a new texture. Um, because this will be a procedural sort of displacement. So if you hit new here, this will create a new texture which will drive the displacement. Um, and then you want to just hit this uh, show texture and textures tab here. Uh, we can rename this something like sun displacement just in case we want to keep track of that. And then swap it from type image, uh, image or movie to clouds. And then you're going to get this weird bumpy thing. Uh, you might want to keep that if you want. If you want like some sort of weird exploding sun. Um, but we're just gonna, first of all, drop the strength down on this just to kind of break up the surface a little bit. And then we're gonna go back to the texture tab and just increase the size of this a little bit. Um, under colors, we can increase the contrast just a tiny bit. Uh, it's just, it's very subtle. Um, pressing one on the number pad there to go into front view. Um, it is very subtle. You don't want to go too crazy with it. Um, I think something like that should be okay. Uh, you can kind of see just the, the difference. It's not huge, but it just uh, helps break up the shape a tiny bit. And then you can kind of see in the rendered image, we have these solar flare type things. Uh, this was a, an earlier kind of version of one of the images I created. Uh, the way I did that was if you just add, um, again, with shift A, if you add a torus, um, again, this this can be very low resolution. Um, maybe drop this down to 24, this to six. Uh, no, maybe, maybe eight, just to get a bit of rounding on the sides of it. Uh, again, shade that smooth. Um, and then what you want to do, is you're gonna to want to just rotate this slightly Again, one to go back into front view. Uh, if we scale it down and kind of position it where we think the solar panel, uh, the solar flare, not the solar panel, uh, where the solar flare is going to go. Um, so then, if we go into vertex mode and just if we deselect everything uh, just by clicking off it, we can go to select. Uh, select random and we just drag this down slightly 
uh, the percentage. Uh, sometimes it might come down here close, just click the little arrow to pop it open again. Um, we just select a few of these and then scale them up with S. Again, just to deform the shape of this slightly. And then what you want to do is if we shift duplicate this, but then right click to leave it where it is. Um, if we come up here to the transform pivot point, we want to be able to rotate this round the sphere uh, and kind of keep it perfectly in line with it. Um, so we change the pivot point to the 3D cursor. And then if we double tap R to go into the trackball rotation, and you can see this kind of rotates around the surface of this. So you want to just get um, get a few of them around. We can change, we can tweak these later. Uh, with this one, I'm going to go into face select mode, select everything, hold Alt S, and that'll just shrink it down a little bit. Again, that was Alt S. And then we go back into object mode, shift D again to duplicate, right click to drop it in place and just R. Um, you can rotate this, maybe scale it in a tiny bit, I'll rotate around to the back, just to peek in over. Uh, I'm just gonna shrink this one down as well. I feel like they're a little bit too chunky. Um, and with this one, I'm probably gonna just move it in slightly, maybe scale it down on the Z axis. Uh, that was S to scale, Z to lock to the Z axis. Just kind of like that. Um, again, we'll, we'll tweak these as and when we need to. Okay, so what, now we've got the flares. Um, we can start to put a little bit of texture to this. Uh, I'm just going to put that there, I think. Yeah. Um, so we split the window, and I'm just going to join these areas and then split the window here. You click up in the top left here, you go up to the editor type, and you can press S to enter the shader tab. Uh, it's a very quick way um, to do that. You can see that S is underlined there, so that goes to the shader. Um, L for timeline. So it's just a little quick tip that if you just click here, S to the shader, uh, D to the 3D viewport, L to the timeline, uh, you can jump around that a lot uh, quickly once you start to learn um, which key gets you where. Uh, but anyway, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a sidebar. Um, yeah, so the first thing we want to do is we want to select our sun, hit new, um, let's create a new material, we'll call this sun. I'm just going to drag this out a bit first. I'm going to create a new window here, um, just so I can go into rendered view for this one. And just make a bit of space for myself here. Um, I am in cycles. Uh, I'm going to put the denoising on for the viewport just to make it um, a bit quicker and easier. Uh, for the render, I'll just put it on now so I don't forget. Uh, I'm going to put optics there. Um, right, so the first thing we need is uh, two mus musgrave textures and one noise texture. So. If we press Shift A, that brings up the Add menu, and we do Musgrave Texture. So we have the Musgrave Texture, and um, we press Shift E to duplicate that, and then Shift A uh, to get a Noise Texture as well. Just going to move these slightly there, and then we also need three color ramps to control the color uh, of the sun. So I'm just going to put these into place again. Shift E, Shift D, and then. Finally, we need three emission shaders. I'm just kind of putting these into place so I know where they are going to connect to. Um, move this further out of the way. Obviously, I've, I've already done this before. Um, a lot of the times with these, like I didn't follow a tutorial myself to make this. I was just playing around with kind of what I knew. It is good to get stuck in, just start adding nodes in um, and playing around to see what the each one does. Um, 
for this to make this a bit easier on us, we are going to want to add uh, enable the Node Wrangler add-on. Um, you go to Edit Preferences, search for Node Wrangler up here, uh, and make sure that's checked. Um, that allows us to do stuff like if we Control Shift click, it then shows us sort of what we're working with, uh, what that texture actually looks like. Okay, so the settings for this are uh, the top. Musgrave texture, we need 1.7 in the scale. Detail, we want 3.9. Dimension, uh, we'll set to zero. And lacunarity, didn't say that right, but 1.9. And then we're going to plug this into this color amp. And then plug this into the admission shader with the strength of 10. Uh, and then we want to set this to sort of sun kind of colors. So this will be um, like a dark brown red color. Dark brown on that end. And then kind of like a red color on this end. Okay, so then we'll go over to uh, the second texture. Set this one to five. Um, for the settings for this one, we want a scale of three, detail of 16, dimension zero, and lacunarity two. And then you can see now we're getting that, uh, the big detail there on the sun. Um, we're getting like the, all, all the kind of like actual, actual texture to that. So for this one, um, we just want a black, yellow, and white uh, color amp for now. Um, we will come back and tweak these. This is just to get kind of some colors into it. And again, let's hook up this noise texture. We set this to a strength of 15. Control shift click to see what this looks like. And then we're going to want a scale of 100, a detail of 16, roughness of 0 0.792, and distortion of So now, to combine all of these together to get some sort of semblance of what this is going to look like, uh, we need some add shade, uh, mix shaders. Sorry, we need two of these. Um, so this is going to connect up here. We'll plug this one in here. Connect that one up here, and then we we'll connect that here. And if we control shift click this, uh, we can kind of see here what uh, what's going on. This is kind of how it looks at the minute. Um, and then we just need to sort of play around with these colors. So if I bring this up, bring that up further. Okay, so let's just go back to this color ramp for a second. So uh, we want this to kind of give us that the really sort of dark maroony color. So I think that needs to be black. We bring this up um, and then add a bit more black to that. And that gives us a good base. Um, it comes up with these sort of ring, ring shapes. Okay, so that gives us the sort of like outline, just uh, a good base to build on. Um, so the next, we really need to crank this one up. So again, control shift click uh, to see what this is doing. We bring that up quite high. Like we, this is kind of like the blowing out highlight sort of uh, thing. 
And then we change this to B spline to just have a bit of a softer gradient up to it. Um, and we could do that with the top one as well, actually. We just, um, you can see it, it, the transition is just a bit smoother there between those colors. And then for this one, um, in oranges, this is kind of like the main color for this. Again, it's just about tweaking, um, playing with each individual color. Uh, just until you get what you want it to look like. Um, we can get rid of the principal shader here because we are using the uh, emission shaders. We just plug this one into the surface, if I can get that. Anyway, I'm still not quite happy with the white on this, so instead of white, um, those highlights would still be quite yellow, so there we go, that's a bit better. And then for this orange, So you can see what this um, top shader is doing, is it's just adding sort of a little bit of dimension underneath. Uh, very subtle. And then we can just subtly bring a bit more influence in here from these these shaders, that top shader, and then reduce the influence slightly. Oh, maybe raise the influence slightly there. Okay, so that's a good sort of approximation of our sun there. Uh, we can tweak uh, a bit later on if we need to. Um, I'm just going to make this yellow bit of a brighter kind of yellow. There we go. Okay, so that's our the main sun shader uh, done. Okay, so the next thing is to shade the solar flares. Uh, you can see at the minute they are just the, um, the plain white tauruses that we've got. Uh, and the way we're going to do this is through uh, volumetrics. Um, so we just create a new shader for these tauruses. Um, if you click the other, sh the other tauruses and then shift click the one we've just set the material on last, uh, you can press control L, uh, control L, and then link material. So now you can see that each of these flares has this flare volume uh, shader on it. Uh, and this is kind of similar to the process that we've just done um, using the noises for the main sun texture. Uh, but this is going to plug into uh, the volume output in the end. So again, Shift A to go into the Add menu. We click Search. Uh, we can search for another Musgrave texture. Drop that in. Uh, this one's going to be set to a scale of minus 12, uh, detail 16, dimension of 2.8, and lacunarity of 2. Uh, this then goes into a math node set to multiply. And we'll plug the Musgrave texture into the top slot and then we'll multiply that with a value of 0 0.5. And then we'll add a volume scatter node. Plug this into the density 
the anastropy to 0 0.15 and this then plugs into the volume of the material output slot. And just give this a second to render. Okay, now to see this, uh, to see the volumetric, so we do need some light in our scene. Uh, so I'm just going to hit Shift A to add in a light, and it'll be a point light. And we'll just bring this back slightly. Um, and go into the light settings and just scale this up. So just from the front view, just so it's roughly, it's like slightly larger than uh, the sun. And we'll bring that back on the y-axis slightly. And then if we go over to the uh, world tab, uh, we can set the, the background to a nice dark kind of red color. And we'll just bring the strength of this down to around 0.7. And um, so you can see that's kind of give it that red orangey kind of glow. Add some volume in, and we'll just add a volume scatter. Very low density, just to give it a bit of glow. Point eight eight on the anastropy, and then if we select the point light uh, that we've got here, and um, we need to crank this up really high. Seventy-five thousand, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's way too bright. I always need to set this to kind of orange to get that nice orange glow. Right, let's bring that down to something like twenty thousand. That's a bit more like it. Uh, To make this orange a bit darker, maybe a bit more red. There we go. So I think what's happening here is these volumes are getting lost, kind of in the volume of the world, of the world settings. Um, so I've just turned this volume off for now, just so we can tweak these. I mean, the flares do need to be really subtle anyway, kind of like this. You can kind of see that they're just very slowly sticking out. Um, and we can add more of these in as well. Uh, so for the point light, I we can go a little bit higher, like 30,000 maybe. There you go, you can see that these are really coming out now. Um, because of the low sample rate and the denoising, that's why we're having a bit of issue uh, from this distance. So hopefully when we render it out, that won't be the case. Okay, so the next thing to do is to get a kind of bit of volume glow around the actual uh, sun itself. Um, so not just the toruses, but kind of like a layer of, uh, a layer of activity on the surface. And what we want to do here is we're going to select the sun object, this sphere. Uh, again, Shift D to duplicate, right click to drop it exactly where it was. And we hold S and then Shift. We could just slowly scale that up just so slightly, uh, just so it's sitting kind of above the original sphere. So this is the original sphere. Uh, this is the scaled uh, sort of outer shell, as it were. Um, and we're just going to scrap the sun material from that. And we want to add in a new sun volume material. And essentially, we can just copy these this node group here uh, from the flares uh, by Control C. And then if we select the sun volume material. Uh, we can get rid of this principled and then paste them in, hit the volume. Uh, plug the volume into the volume uh, and then we just want to turn this down slightly because it's uh, it's a bit too large for what we want here um, I'm going to drop this to minus 3.8 uh, go to 8.8 .8 for the detail dimension of 7.8 and the lacunarity leave that at 2 um, 
this multiply node is the same. And then for the anastropy, um, I think that actually looks quite good. I had it lower in my other test one. Uh, but if we zoom in here, this actually looks quite a bit of like nice sort of surface glow. Um, you can really see the details there on the sun. Uh, I'm noticing that it is quite choppy. You can see that it's quite low resolution. So at this point, um, if we go into the subdivision, uh, you can either leave it as it is or just crank it up uh, in the viewport to two. Um, so that's a bit closer to how it's going to be when it's rendered. Um, and then at this point, I just dial in the density of the world volume uh, just slightly. So like 0 0.0001. Maybe we'll go a bit higher. Uh, 0 0.001. 0.0005. No, so it seems the minimum there is 0 0.001. Um, what I'll do, I'll just quickly render this out at a very low sort of resolution just to see what kind of result we're getting. Um, okay, so if we add our camera in, uh, go to Shift A, camera, um, and then we want to just bring this back on the Y slightly and then go into camera view here bring this back just want to position this so it's facing facing our sun along that y-axis so we just need to swap the pivot point back over to the median point uh, and then bring this up on the x just to frame that if we move it, move the camera back, but then in the camera settings, go into about 200 on the focal length, uh, that kind of gives it that spacey sort of look. Um, obviously, the focal lengths are a lot higher on cameras when they're in space anyway. Um, so to kind of replicate that look, you don't want a wide angle lens because it won't look kind of exactly how it would look. Uh, from a camera in space. So we could probably crank this up even higher. Yeah, 360. 360 kind of works. I'm kind of position that in the middle. Uh, and I'm just going to file render at a low sample rate just to see kind of what kind of look we're getting. So you can see that the sort of surface flares. Um, I think I'm going to have to render this slightly higher just to get some sort of idea of whether these uh, the solar flares are actually showing up. So I'll quickly do that. Okay, so that took 36 seconds to render. Um, so I'm really liking this uh, the sort of the surface level uh, detail on here. Um, I think I do need to scale it down just a little bit. I'll come out of that. Uh, let's just scale that in just so it's a bit closer to uh, the surface of the original sun. I'm going to pull these out just slightly. Then I'm just going to go straight into the density just to see if that helps. No, okay, so. So what we want from these solar flares is we kind of we don't want them that bright. Um, so we plug that back into the density, but maybe increase the value of this. Ah, see, there we go. They're coming through now. Um, I think what's happened here. I was using. I did this originally um, in Blender 2.8. Uh, I'm using 2.9 here. Uh, so I don't know if some of the sends of the way the volume, uh, the volumetrics work, have slightly changed. 
Okay, to make these visible, it looks like we're going to want like a, a 1.5 on those. Uh, kind of let that render and denoise slightly. Okay, so I'm going to drop 512 samples now. Let's try rendering this one out. Okay, so this was the next render. Uh, we are getting there slowly. Uh, okay, let's just see what we can do in the compositor uh, to sort of uh, bring this out slightly. So we go over to the compositing tab uh, and click use nodes. And then control shift click on the render layers to bring the sun up in the background. We can hit V to zoom out and then hold Alt V to zoom in if we need to. So we'll bring these across here. But first of all, we'll add uh, some more denoising to this. Let that calculate. Um, I mean, so that's taken out some of the noise on that. Uh, let's add a bit of glare to it just to see if we can get a bit more of a glow. Um, drop that in here. And we want to swap this over to fog glow. Um, put a kind of low mix on that and the size. Oh, there we go. Uh, we needed to reduce the threshold slightly um, to get a nice glow from the sun there. Uh, let's try dropping this just a tiny bit further. Uh, maybe, maybe raising it. So really, we only kind of want the brightest parts to be giving us this glow. Um, Okay, uh, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the flares themselves are still quite, uh, I think they stick out a little bit too far now. Uh, so if we go back, we can select these, uh, just bring them in slightly. I'd maybe also shrink them a little bit more. Uh, again, let's, if we select all of the faces and hit Alt-S, uh, just to shrink that, bring it in, just a little bit closer to the surface. Um, I mean, at this point, it's all kind of just down to personal taste. You might want a bit more of a stylized thing. Uh, you might want to go for more real realism. Uh, you might want to tweak the colors to get yourself a bit more of a sci-fi kind of sun. Um, I mean, it's really up to you. It's the kind of that creative process at this point. I'm going to just go back to the shader editor. Uh, I'm just going to bring this down ever so slightly on the flare volumes um, just because on this on the version that we've just made uh, it's very bright um, I'm hoping that we can just kind of drop some of that density down just to let uh, a little bit less uh, make them kind of less bright as it were let's render that back out okay so that's done um, so it's taken a minute, which is pretty good. On 2.8, it was taking about seven minutes, so we're doing something better here. Uh, I quite like this solar flare, actually. It's uh, a lot more subtle uh, with those settings. Um, I think the glow uh, could be tweaked slightly again. Um, go back to sort of the original mix. No. Maybe if we go down. So I'll just hold shift and drag the mix just to slowly take that down. Uh, oh, maybe. There we go. So we're getting more of that glow. Um, and then from this point, we can probably bring up the threshold slightly. Bring it back down. Um, 
another thing we can do for this, if we go to uh, color management, um, where it says view transform filmic uh, and then look medium contrast, we can bring this up to high contrast or very high contrast. That really brings out the kind of blackness in the image. And then we might actually want to turn this down slightly. I feel like this has gone a bit too overboard now. There we go. Uh, so that nice bright kind of yellow. The what we want is these spots to kind of be blown out and become almost white, um, which is kind of what we're getting here. Yeah, I'm very happy with that how how that turned out. And 2.9, so very 2.9 is a very big improvement. Sorry, uh, one minute eleven. That was taking around seven minutes to render in 2.8. Uh, I don't know if there's just something I've missed that I was messing up the first time around uh, when I was doing this tutorial. I've missed it out that step, but uh, the results are still. Very good, um, very crisp and clear. Uh, and what's good about this method is because it is all procedural, uh, we can click into the sun volume and then we can change kind of the color if you want some more kind of sci-fi worlds, we can uh, we can go there and do that. You know, you can get some like really trippy effects here. Um, and you can just really have a play around and just get a bit creative with it. Uh, you know, you can make these sort of, yeah, very, very odd world uh, and suns from distant universes. Uh, but yeah, I uh, hope you liked that video. Um, it's my first kind of tutorial like this. I wanted to keep in sort of as many of the mistakes as possible just to show that uh, how to kind of problem solve and get those mistakes sorted. Um, if you do have any suggestions as to how I can improve this sort of going forward, um, I'd be really, I would really like to hear those. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to see more tutorials in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers, bye.